So, hi Noel, uh, thank you for taking the time to speak to me today. Um, I just wanted to ask a few things about being diabetic as a fellow type 1 diabetic. So, um, when you were first diagnosed, how did that impact you straight away? Um, it, it was sort of a big change and, and not much of a change at the same time. So mentally it was quite a lot to take in, um, just because obviously it's something new, something I've never even considered that might be um, a condition that I have. Um, but initially we'd sort of taken the insulin and, and improving those levels. We only made very minor changes because we didn't want to basically risk me going the complete other way and, yeah, yeah, and ending yeah. up uh, wiped out. So um, it, it was a change, but not, not as drastic as, as maybe it might sound. So did you go into it with some sort of um, preconceptions, sort of like, um, like insulin and hypo, hypers, stuff like that? I mean, it, it sounds bad. Like one of my best mates at school was type one and we just made like a, a joke about it. Right. But that was partly from him. He kind of um, took the mickey out of himself and just played it down. So I, I was never too uptight about it and I never really sort of took how seriously it could be. Um, and then I got back in touch with him and sort of said, mate, I'm so sorry for, for all that yeah, sort of mickey yeah, yeah. taking that we did at the time. But um, he's that sort of guy. He's willing to put himself out there and, and take the mickey out of himself to make others feel at ease. And I think I've kind of tried to do that as best as I can here as well because it's quite an unforgiving um, environment to have something like that. Yeah, when, yeah. It, when it's new and nobody understands it. Um, so It's a bit daunting at first. Yeah, and the lads like taking the mickey uh, as much as they can. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just try and play it down and, and just make it as normal as I can for everybody. So, on the football inside of things, how is that? How have you coped with those sort of things? Sort of like um, in games, and I suppose you've got half time if you needed to treat any side of the diabetes. But how has that impacted on you in terms of the game? Uh, last year was terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, to be totally honest, I I just used to have four or five different sort of feelings and emotions and all sorts through the game. I could feel perfectly fine, I could feel nauseous, I could feel exhausted, I could have blurred vision and that's all within sort of 45 minutes of football. Yeah. Um, and then half time would normally come around and usually that's when I'd start feeling all right again. Right. Um, so it would be when the insulin would start working and bring my sugars back down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it became another problem going back out because it had all started again. So it was a bit of a roller coaster last year. Yeah. Um, but thankfully took the summer, sort of played around a bit, experimented a little bit with, with different things and, and different workouts and stuff like that. And so far this year, um, barring a couple of games when I was without my, my centre, um, things have been pretty bang on. Um, and that gives me confidence knowing I'm going out there in the right state, in the right condition to be out there. And yeah, um, and yeah that, that's, that's really the, the key to it is is being sort of proactive with it, using my sensor and, and the stuff that I have available and, and making sure that everything's always balanced and, and ready to go. So is there any so anyone you sort of confide in, maybe the manager, maybe the players, not necessarily during a game, but maybe in training or something like that? Um, sometimes I think, I obviously I have to speak to the Fizz quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and he can track um, my data through the app that we've got and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah on a night if I'm because I'm down without um, the family so it, if I have a low sugar through the night and he's concerned um, he can give me a call or if right. it goes too low it'll set an alarm off on his yeah, phone yeah, yeah. Um, and then he'll sort of ring me are you alright I've had it a few times but it's often been that I've just fallen asleep on the sensor and it's had a bit of a five minute dip so yeah, um, yeah it's probably the Fizz and John really that I keep in touch with most about it because they're the two that would be able to get off and get me something if I needed it. Um, obviously the lads are in there playing and concentrating on their own games. So um, yeah, it's probably those two who, if I have any concerns or I'm not feeling right, they're the two that I'd probably go to. So did you sort of struggle initially and then you sort of come into your own, maybe because you need a bit more education initially, but maybe something like that? Um, I think it's, it's probably fair to say that, to be honest. Yeah. Um, like I said, the summer was a great opportunity just because you don't have the stress of you're training for the game and yeah, yeah, you know yeah. everything's about performance so I had time to go and try different things different foods different sort of routines of, of taking insulin or you know finding out which different foods react differently with different amounts of insulin like it's all about it's carb all, counting yeah yeah well yeah and I've, I've been to see specialists and they've said that 
I'm too early on to do carb counting, so oh, right. okay. I'm still sort of trial and error. Um, so still in the honeymoon period, I suppose. Yeah. Because you said you were diagnosed in January, is that right? Yeah, so the honeymoon period, they've now told me for like an athlete or an active person could last up to four years. Really? All oh, right. Because <laughs> so I've, I've I, been kind of like, I sort of hope it does, and then again, I hope it doesn't because yeah, yeah. I'd get too comfortable within that. And then if it took four years and then I... Um, start to, to change again I'm not sure that would be the easiest thing to deal with but right, yeah, um, yeah th that's sort of a help but now in the last sort of week when the weather started turning that makes a, a difference yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was the biggest thing that hit me last year was when the weather changed around sort of March April time um, and they had warned me about it but you, you can't really be prepared to you've sort of got to live through it first don't you yeah you've just got to do it on the fly and it, it caught me out and I was off for a few weeks then as well and I just felt terrible yeah. and everyone's going well what's the difference and I was like the weather and they're like people just don't people believe don't it. understand do they, they no. don't get it no. no so it's yeah it's hard and there are misconceptions and it you know you've got to sometimes just take a little bit of grief but just knowing that people are either uneducated on it or are just ignorant to it and that for me is the hardest thing so what would you say to anyone out there who thinks they may have type 1 diabetes or even type 2 for that matter? What would you say should they, they should do? Um, if you are worried and you do have um, some of the symptoms, just go and speak to someone, go to the doctors, um, be checked. It's a quick procedure. It may be a urine test, it may be a blood test. It takes literally two minutes um, and you'll get your results and you'll know there for certain and, and they may even be able to tell you if you know, you've got any danger of developing it um, further along so yeah. it, it's a quick thing to get checked and you know it could save your life so I'd go and get it checked. Thank you very much. No problem.